What's going on, everybody? It's Dean Snob here again. Happy Thanksgiving. It's the day after Black Friday, but yet we got a, another episode of The Mandalorian coming out today, and I'm excited, so I had to hop on here, and I wanted to review it real quick. So uh, let's just start. Let's get, uh, get into it. Um, so we, we follow, the show opens up on a planet called Sorgan, um, where we see uh, um, villagers, like a little fishing village, um, it's very reminiscent of like what you see in, uh, like Vietnam. It was a beautiful scenery, um, just landscape and such. And then we get these, uh, the focus is on this, um, mother and daughter, Omira and Winta. Winta's the daughter, Omira's the mother. Um, so we start seeing some rumbling coming from the, the forest line, uh, and then invaders coming in. And, uh, they are running, uh, Amira goes to save her daughter Winter, and, uh, they hide until, um, the raiders are gone. Then we cut to an adorable scene, of course, with baby Yoda yet again, um, hanging out with the Mandalorian on his ship, the Razor's Crest. Um, so it was pretty cool. Uh, they find Sorgan, and that's where they decide to go and, um, hide you know, hide out for a while while they're being chased. So they get there, um, just kind of go through, I don't want to give away too much. Um, they go through, uh, he gets the Sorgan, he runs into like a little bar restaurant type cantina thing. Uh, some great imagery, some really cool stuff they, they had there. Um, the whole episode. Um, so he meets, uh, Kara, after a fight scene that they have together, uh, he's thinking this girl, Kara, played by Gina Carano, um, it might be a bounty hunter for, after him and, uh, Baby Yoda. So he, um, they end up fighting, then they kind of hash it out and figure it out through the cuteness and adorability again of Baby Yoda. I keep mentioning him, but it's just true. And, um, so they you know, become friendly and they start talking. She's an ex-rebel shock trooper who was working on Endor. After the Battle of Endor and uh, Return of the Jedi. So, of course, everybody knows that. Uh, so she um, so she was a shock trooper for the Rebel Alliance that um, ended up quitting after things got too political. Um, but yeah, her job was basically to hunt down Imperial warlords and such. So, pretty awesome. Uh, it's an awesome kind of backstory. I wouldn't mind seeing more. Um so they go on, they go to the village, the villagers come again, he's about to leave, Mandalorian's about to roll out, because she's in hiding there, um, so he's about to take off, go somewhere else, but then these villagers come and he finds out they have a remote, um, uh, place to hide, a remote village, so, and they need help, you know, with, uh, everything going on with these raiders and stuff, I think they're Klaatunian raiders or something like that, um, I believe is what was mentioned. Um, so he goes back and he enlists the help of uh, Kara. They go to the village. He starts to get close with everybody. He starts to get close with the mirror, especially. Um, Baby Yoda's fitting right in with all the other kids. And then um, upon doing kind of some searching and such, and uh, they take out a camp of the, of the raiders, um, they find out that they have an ATST, which... I never, when you watch Return of the Jedi, I'm like, ah, they're just, they weren't that threatening. I was like, I get why they're effective, but they're not that threatening. Um, this one was. Now, they don't mention how the Raiders got their hands on the ATST. It must have been left behind from the Empire after it ended. But, man, it looks, it looks awesome. Uh, looks truly terrifying too. So they did an amazing job with this. Bryce Dallas Howard directed this episode and she did a fantastic job. She's got her dad's eye, man. Um, because say whatever you will about Solo or not, I didn't think it was a bad movie. I liked it. Um, is it one of the highest quality Star Wars movies? No, but the guy came in and, you know, an amazing director came in and he kind of took on the role and it still was a good movie. Um, Regardless, I don't want to. I don't want to get too far into that. But Bryce Dallas Howard has the eye. She she's got her father's eye, because everything looks great. Um, 
everything that, you know the new species and everything like that like it was just planned out perfectly and yeah a lot of that has to do with uh john favreau and his team coming in and producing it properly but she had a pro you know like the character interactions everything like it, it was very well directed and uh yeah i applaud her on that she did a great job with the star wars the second <clears throat> after deborah chow last uh, week's episode she's the second female director to ever direct a live uh action star wars show so star wars live action star wars anything so that great job right bryce dallas howard really loved it um you know so just so you know it all builds up to them fighting uh them teaching the villagers and fighting uh these raiders what was awesome about it is that it's very much the standoffish it's it's following this western spaghetti western vibe to it the mandalorian is just getting better and better his story we're catching more and more of his backstory as we go on we're seeing more and more about him and who he was uh versus who he is now and it's it's kind of bleeding over more and more each episode like where he started out really cold it's starting to get into a a, a point where of just like he's got this heart i mean we saw that with him saving baby yoda but now with the villagers and things and it's not so much about the money anymore it's he's just trying to do the right thing it seems and uh he's becoming more fatherly having to take care of yoda i'm just loving every episode but uh, it's get it seems to be building up to him taking off his helmet because they really reference it and they've referenced it in a few other episodes but he um especially referenced it in this one where she almost tries to take his helmet off uh omira and he's like, nope. And he puts it right back on. Like, and he mentions he hasn't taken it off from anybody since he put it on. <clears throat> and uh, which when he was a kid when that happened. So just real, the story is flowing perfectly. And I, I love that each episode is kind of, it, yes, it, it does revolve around them sometimes. Like last week was the rescue. The sin episode was the rescue. And uh, now this one's kind of like a one-off, like where it's, you have him protecting these villagers. You know, he, he is the Clint Eastwood character who's coming in. Uh, and actually, I would probably put this more along the lines of more John Ford, Ford type Western than maybe a spaghetti Western. This is more of a, he's, he's the lone gunman who's coming in to protect the village. Very Shane esque, uh, which I know wasn't directed by John Ford, but um, ironically, but um, you know, yeah, it's something along those lines, like the old like forties, fifties westerns, where the hero is there and he's just there, there to do the right thing. Um, you know, Magnificent Seven is definitely you, you can see a lot of it in there. Um, even uh, kind of remind me a little bit of like a serious Blazing Saddles too. So, you know, if you kind of get my drift on what I mean there. But, you know, I don't want to keep dwelling on what kind of Western this is, but it just is a brilliant story. And uh, each episode gets better and better. Now, I loved The Sin. It's probably my favorite episode so far. It was just blew me out of the water. This is a great episode. And I could see where, it's, you know, people think it's better than The Sin. But, and I loved it. This is definitely up there. But it didn't surpass the last episode for me, just personally. Um, but it is a great, great episode. And uh, I, I really suggest uh, go checking it out as soon as possible. Hopefully you guys got Disney Plus to do so. And, uh, you know, yeah, so it's just, it, it's just, the show keeps getting better and better. It, it, it's more Star Wars than anything I've seen in a long time. Probably Return of the Jedi. And I, I just, I can't get over how great it is. So... Um, with that being said, like even like Rogue One, I, I kind of go off on a tangent here for a sec. Rogue One was great, but it wasn't, it just, it, it was in the same world as Star Wars. It didn't feel like a Star Wars movie to me. Han Solo didn't feel like a Han, it didn't feel like a Star Wars movie to me. It just, it, but it felt like it, it fit within the realm of that galaxy. Um, and the same is kind of goes with, the uh, the new trilogy. You know, I just haven't really seen something that, like, this is what Star Wars is. 
and uh and mandalorian does that for me i i don't know i just that's how i feel but um let me know what you guys think uh, i'm always excited to hear different points of view on things especially uh especially star wars um but yeah so if uh you comment or leave me messages or anything like that also leave me requests let me know if there's anything you want to see or do uh, i'm happy to check out um also make sure uh you're checking us out on we're at the scene snobs.com that's where you can find everything um links to everything also um we have the scene snobs youtube channel um we have the scene snobs on facebook give us a like and we have at the scene snob on instagram and twitter give us a follow so we've got other podcasts out there and uh, other videos and things like that so check us out and let us know what you think have a good one may the force be with you